Okay, today we'll learn about tradable pollution permits. But before we go to this tradable permission permits, we'll see how the company situation before the tradable pollution permits. Okay, let's suppose we have two firm here, the company. This A and B, let's just suppose it's still company, still factory, and this one is pepper factory, just to make it easier. This two company have similar problem. Company A from A has 40 tons of sulfur dioxide per month, and company B also have 40 tons of sulfur dioxide per month. So now the government tried to reduce the pollution. Okay, so here is the goal of the government. The goal of the government is to reduce sulfur dioxide emission by 25% to 60 tons per month. So you can see here they are 40 and 40, so it was 80 tons per month. So now the goal is how to reduce it to be 60 tons. The problem here, still company and pepper company has different cost of reducing emission. Well, why could it happen? Because the two company, they have a different type of machine, a different scale and many different things. So basically they have different cost of reducing emission. Company A, 100 ton, 100, sorry, $100 per ton. Meanwhile, for company B, $200 per ton. So let's calculate that. For firm A, they need $1,000 to achieve the goal. So they can reduce it 10 tons. And then, meanwhile, for this company, they need $2,000 because they want to reduce it by 10 tons. Meanwhile, the cost is $200 per ton. So this company needs $1,000 and this company needs $2,000. Overall, the two firm, both of them will cost $3,000 to achieve the goal to reduce sulfur dioxide emission by 25% to 60 tons per month. Okay, that's the situation before the pollution permits. Now let's see what happened in pollution permits.